there's no one here yet. Do you want to get me some milk? Thank you, Ade. Coffee assistant. Huh? Thank you. I appreciate the coffee assistance. Yes, we do. I. Sure, or the other one, or whichever. It doesn't matter. They're all good. Uh, cinnamon roll, milk, and half and half. Yes, please. Cinnamon roll. Exciting. I love a cinnamon roll. I will have a cinnamon roll. Somebody give me a cinnamon roll. Somebody get Secret Fiance's cinnamon roll stat. 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 Who's got the cinnamon roll? Cinnamon seeds of. 100 cc's of cinnamon. Cinnamon cinnamons. Uh, cinnamon rolls. Okay. We can make that work. CC's are cinnamons, right? CC's are cinnamons. I don't think so. No? No. Mary's on the way with your cinnamon roll. <gasps> Mary. He said thank you. He said thank you, Mary. Oh, he said thank you, Mary. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm throwing one your way right now as I drive by. Catch. Anya's throwing one our way as she drives by. So catch cinnamon it. Cinnamon roll drive by? Yes. Violent. I like violent that. or delicious? You decide. Deliciously violent. Deliciously violent. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Uh-oh. Help, please. Hmm. It's brand new. I can't open it. I'll send him directions to the nearest store. Get walking, boy. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's your Viking buddy, Amanda. It's almost time for us to go back into football, right? Yeah. It's almost time. And there are. Who's been missing our football updates? There are no kickoff rules. It's all new kickoff rules. Things. Oh God! I just learned this, there were other this rules. More, this, this new thing's to learn. Are we gonna do a fantasy football league? I say we do it. No, I don't want people to have to pay for it. No, I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I meant Patreon people or, oh. or book club people. Because um, you might need more people. Oh, yeah, uh, Rainbow Slime Girl. Yeah. Uh, just the slime page in general. I just got a survey what? asking if this live is appropriate or whatever. What did you tell them, Nice? <laughs> did you say no? <laughs> She's a looney tune. Morning, Jen. Who would do a fantasy football league? with me if we called it the girls who don't know anything. <laughs> I mean... I am a pirate. Do I have to give, like, the, the dad, like, it's a big responsibility talk? Like, yes. Do you get a pet for a fantasy football? Yeah, but do you guys know the song? We are the pirates who don't know anything. We just stay at home and lie around. <laughs> and if you ask us to do anything, we just tell you we don't do anything. From VeggieTales. I definitely did not visit. No, not Pirates of Penzance. Pirates of Penzance is like, I am the Pirate King. Like that. Yes, of course, Amanda. Of course. You would be the first member. My partner likes football, so it would be fun. Oh, yeah, since you already have to watch anyway, we, we might as well all enjoy ourselves here, right? I'm just trying to talk you out. Yeah, I think we should do it. Will you help me make it? Secret Fiance is gonna make us a football league. Woo! Uh, you have to decide how large you want your league to be. Well, let's find out how many people want to participate first, and then we'll go from there. Well, I'm saying that. Um, Look at this amazing coffee that made you. It looks amazing. Nice. Um, wow, so delicious. We can call it sports ball. That's right. Hey, Becca. Sports ball. We can call it the girls who don't know anything about sports ball. Um, but. Like Tell us about it. How do we make it? And when do we start? <laughs> August? Yeah. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. Um, the only caveat is you have to choose how big you want the to be. And the more people there are, the, the harder it is to find to fill rosters. Yes. Really quickly before we talk about that, I want to answer Gigi's question here. Um, they said, how do you get better at playing with clear slime when it's so sticky? I would recommend when you're new to playing with clear slime, keep activator nearby and constantly prime your hands with activator before you touch the slime. So for example, let's pretend that 
that this is activator. I know it's not, but I would dip my hands in the activator, rub it on my hands, and then touch the slime. And if it starts to get sticky again, before it starts to stick to you when it's just feeling tacky, dip your hands in it again, make sure the activator's on your hands, and that will keep it from sticking to you and help you have a barrier. Ooh, sorry about that. As you're learning, and then the other thing you can do is only buy coated clears in the beginning so that you don't have that tackiness. Um, yes, of course, Jen. Um, and then uh, you definitely don't have to get out of bed today, Anya. Okay, so what did you want to tell us about the league, babe? Uh, well, I was going to say, uh, 12 teams in a league is the standard. So is only 12 people in a fantasy football league? Usually. Wait, really? Oh, well, then it's only going to be book club. But it can go up to 18 and like... Oh, that's not very many people. But okay, I, well, it's just us, you guys. <laughs> Assuming they all want to do it. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's 40 people on here right now. Only 18 uh, can do it. That's like... I, I mean, like the upper limit. Maybe some of us can share. Like, Becca and I can uh, be a I team. I can look into 32 person leagues and how those work i don't i think it requires players to be shared somehow well that's what i'm saying maybe we could be a team maybe liz and becca and i could be a team oh yeah if you if you want to do a patreon thing where you're like you have teams within teams and you all kind of like share the same password and come up with their rosters together that's not a bad idea so yeah. that more people could play it's just like we'll do it on ESPN. yeah amanda we'll on, said we have to do a draft we'll do it on espn you know like how do you have a draft, Amanda? So we have to have a draft. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a we'll do a. Um, so what's more interesting to you? Do you want to do a snake draft, or snake draft is 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 not it's everybody like everyone is randomly chosen, and then the way it works is like if you're chosen first, you get the first pick. The last last person chosen gets the last pick, but then. The last person gets to choose again, mm -hmm. and it goes down the line. I'm walking through the jungle. Yeah. Okay, and what's the alternative? The alternative to is, a snake draft is a, a a a draft where you get money and you essentially you bid on players. Not real money, like fake game money. Fake money. Okay, good. I don't want anyone to have to pay, but like no, game like money. Everybody gets fake. Game money. money's fine. I'm fine with game fake money. Fake money, and you bid for players, and you. I would suggest for maybe a beginner league snake draft. Okay, we can do that. Okay, I will see how many people genuinely want to play, and if it's more than 32 people, we will make teams. So why don't you, yeah, do that, and then... That's what I will do. And I would suggest two to three person teams. Okay. Two to three people per team. And sure. And you could have a lot more people do it. Okay. I will, let's see how many people want to, want to do it, and we'll go from there, and we'll make how, how big the teams need to be. Yeah. Okay, this is fine. We will work on this. Hi. But each one will have to make their own ESPN account. Yes. And if it's teams, they'll all have to be share. nice and share with each other. Well, of course, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Becca, you are going to be on my team for fantasy football. <laughs> she came in confused, not knowing what to do. Yes, with Liz. If we have to have a three-player team, Liz and Becca and I will be a team. Will be team mods because I don't think the other mods do football unless Renee does football. Does Renee do football? I don't know. Anyway, ideally, you know, teams are like one person knows football and a couple people that like want to like just be. Liz part knows of football, yeah. so she's our football, and I am the medium. And Becca's like, "The f are you talking about? Maybe I could be chairman of slime football and not play." No, you have to play Amanda. She, Amanda doesn't think she should play because she knows too much about football and she thinks it would be unfair. I think she should play anyway. You should play. That's insane not to. Yeah, it's insane not also, to. Also, fantasy football is random. Yeah, I think you should play anyway. And you're in a league with a bunch of people. <laughs> Becca said, go sports ball. Kick a home run. Kick a home run. <laughs> um, hey, Tana. Uh, do you have pre-made slime? Not at this time. Uh... Yeah, I think you should play Amanda. I, I vote Amanda plays. And Amanda, you'll just be the leader of one of the There's teams. There's going to be other ringers. And by the way, some people that join are just going to have their like boyfriends or husbands. Right, exactly. Friends. So. Yeah. I'm going to help Sasha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you should play Amanda. <clears throat> I vote Amanda plays. Yeah, I think Tana just came on a second ago. Yeah, she did. She, she just joined a second ago. She's up there. Yeah. Yeah, Jen said she is going to have help from her partner. Um, not you, Becca. Not you. 
What are we playing? Jack, we, oh no, not you, not you, Puddle, but there's a different person named Tana who joined at the same time. <laughs> hey, Des, I didn't see you were in here. Yeah, we're talking about fantasy football. Um, we are going to start a, a rainbow slime fantasy football league because it seems like a hilarious thing to do. Um, and maybe we'll all be awful or maybe we'll be awesome. Puddlebug, I don't know. I know that you are on Patreon, but I don't know which name you link up on Patreon. Have fun. I think we will. I think we'll have a great time. But I saw Tana's last name on hers. Oh, you changed your username, Jen. That didn't used to be your username on here. When did you change it? I'll be down. I'll be last. But until yeah, I think we're all in it to have fun, Jack. Can we call it a different name every time, like in the book? Yes, I think we should. I think we should do it. Like sometimes we'll be like rainbow football and sometimes it'll be slimy sports ball. <laughs> and that'll be fun. You did. You totally changed your name. Like a few weeks ago. Oh, it's a different account. Okay. That makes sense. Can I be the bias scorekeeper? No, it automatically scores it on you. Doesn't it automatically score you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to solve any of the actual scoring. Thank goodness. Because guess what I don't do? Numbers. <clears throat> anyway. Hi, everybody. Who is here and ready for the day? Tressa, fantasy football. Um, the water girl. I would take a water girl. Um, all right. We are, yeah, no math for me. Come back one year or seven. I have never accomplished the math thing. Guys, we're almost done with this book. That is something. Slimy sports ball. Oh, no, that's not a good visual. It's funny, though. Um... We are almost done with this book, which means I need to go to the store and get us book two in this series, but I can do that over the weekend or whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, yes, oranges. Yes, please bring orange slices. Yes, yes, that's a good one. I remember that and I like that from the one semester that I did soccer. It was tormentous. I don't have good memories from playing soccer. No, I was in fourth grade. Oh, my mom's here. Perfect timing. Mom, remember that one time that you had me in soccer instead of theater? What a mistake. <laughs> what a mistake. Oh, uh, yes. This child was only built for the theater. That's sad, Tressa. What? <laughs> remember in Washington, Mom, the one semester that I did soccer? Ben was my coach. I'm glad it's a series and not just one because it would be unfortunate. It would be horrible and sad. Band too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, let's read so that we can um, enjoy this chapter. This is chapter 13 and it is called The Watcher in the Woods. I don't think that's something I would complain about theaters way better. I was forced to play volleyball. Volleyball is pretty big in Southern California, but I didn't do it. I also did theater. I was an oddball. No, an oddball. It's awesome. My brother did sports and theater. He did both. He was on the wrestling team and did theater every year. So, you know, there's crossover. Um, I don't know how he had time to do all that. I, between choir and theater, oh, I was also in the junior classical league. What a nerd. What a nerd. Okay. <laughs> was anyone else in the junior classical league or just me? Does anyone else even know what the junior classical league is? I was the vice president of the junior classical league. In high school, it's true. Made some really cool stuff. And as a result, I can eyeball a one centimeter by one centimeter square because I made a mosaic out of one uh, The Junior Classical League is high schoolers who take classic languages such as Greek, Latin, uh, and so on. And you all get together at big places once a year and you compete against other students um, about stuff like that. And I took Latin in high school, which was a great decision. I do not regret it at all. I'm glad that I did it. It served me well in life. But um, yeah, Junior Classical League. Volleyball, theater, swim, 4-H. That makes sense for you. I see that, Brittany. <laughs> Amanda, don't be mean. Latin increased my vocabulary so much. I agree. I got almost a perfect score on the English side of my SATs and I did not study one day, not one day. And I almost got an entirely perfect score. I think I missed like 40 points total. Um, so yeah, 
I took that in my first two years of college, Tressa. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. They made us take a year of Latin, French, Spanish so we could decide interesting. I don't know if that would be helpful though, because then wouldn't your brain be confused? They're all very different. It would be different if they were like Latin and Italian because at least they're similar. I don't know. I wish they had high school rodeo, but mine didn't offer that. Mine definitely did not offer rodeo. We did not have rodeo at my high school. Okay, speaking of schools, let's go to Madam Weatherberry's Academy for Magic. Or not, if we're following her because she left. I tried to do Spanish and I couldn't get a sentence structure. That's fair. But Latin, Latin worked for my brain too, Jen. I did one semester of Spanish in ninth grade, but then I wanted to do Latin. Um, I have the same thing, Spanish, French, Latin. That's so interesting, huh? It was one class, so if you preferred one, you knew you could proceed. Oh, 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 okay, I see, I see. Okay, chapter 13, The Watcher in the Woods. While Madame Weatherberry was away, Bristol spent the days practicing magic and evenings reading the tales of Tidbit Twitch to her classmates. Although the exercises and reading were productive, she mainly used them as a distraction from her troubling thoughts. After eavesdropping on Madame Weatherberry and the witches, Bristol finally had answers to some of the questions haunting her, but the more she learned, the more elaborate the mystery had become. Now she understood why Madame Weatherberry had reacted so strongly to the mention of the Northern Kingdom. Something known as the Northern Conflict was destroying the country and someone the fairy feared was, someone the fairy feared was at the center of it. The scaly black letters had been coming from witches, not to update Madame Weatherberry about a sick friend, but to ask for the fairy's assistance with the conflict. Hey, Grace. And apparently, if Madame Weatherberry helped the witches end the Northern Conflict, it would ensure worldwide acceptance for the magical community. But what was the Northern Conflict? How would Madame Weatherberry's involvement bring peace to the witches and fairies? And who was the woman that Madame Weatherberry was afraid of facing? And most disturbing question of all, would Madame Weatherberry survive another encounter with her? Bristol's mind never took a full break from the harrowing questions. She desperately wanted to talk to someone else about it, but she didn't know who to turn to. Emeralda and Xanthos wouldn't know any more than she did. Lucy had enough of her own troubles already, and Bristol doubted Mrs. V would be any help. She considered talking to Tangerine and Skylene, but if the girls heard that Bristol was spying on their teacher, Bristol was certain they would tattle on her. So Bristol thought it was best to keep her worries to herself. The concerns weighed heavily on her heart and the longer Madame Weatherberry stayed away, the more fearful and lonely Bristol felt. This is called a tale of magic, Z. It's the first in a series and we're gonna read the rest of the series, obviously, because it's so good and we can't help ourselves. Well. It's the first in the series, The Tale of Magic, but it's a prequel to another series we read last year, which we're obsessed with. On the third evening after Madame Weatherberry's departure, Bristol was a couple of minutes late to dinner. She was in the middle of a very exciting chapter of The Tales of Tibbet the Twitch, Volume 3, and quickly finished it before joining her classmates downstairs. As soon as she walked into the dining room, Bristol could tell something was wrong. Tangerina was sitting at the table with her arms crossed and her cheeks were flushed. Skylene stood beside her friend, rubbing her shoulders. Emeralda and Xantho sat back in their seats with wide eyes like they had just witnessed a spectacle. What's going on? Bristol asked the room. <laughs> ask them, Tangerina said and pointed to the others. Lucy and Tangerina got in a fight, Emeralda informed her. <clears throat> it was intense. A fight about what? Bristol asked. Well, Lucy walked in and asked Tangerina to stop clogging the bathroom sink with her honey, Xanthos recalled. Tangerina said that she was surprised that Lucy knew what the bathroom was. And then Lucy suggested Tangerina's personality, not her magic, was the real reason that her family abandoned her. And finally, Tangerina told Lucy that she doesn't belong in the academy. And she said that she wished the wishes had, witches had taken her with them. Yeah, and that's when Lucy burst into tears and ran upstairs, Emeralda said. Personally, I thought it was all really entertaining until she got upset. It reminded me of the dwarf boxing matches that we used to have in the coal mines. Bristol sighed, Tangerina, why would you say something like that? You know Lucy's been having a difficult time with her magic. Well, don't blame me, Tangerina exclaimed. Lucy started it. But you didn't have to join her in it, Bristol reprimanded. You're an apprentice, remember? You should be more mature than that. I'm gonna go upstairs and check on Lucy and someone tell Mrs. V that I'll be right back. 
Bristol left the dining room and headed up the floating staircase. She prepared a list of positive and encouraging things to say to Lucy, but in case kind words weren't enough, Bristol waved her wand and made a tray of chocolate cupcakes appear. Way harsh, Ty. However, she reached, as she reached the third floor corridor, something very strange caught her eye. The door to Lucy's bedroom had disappeared and a note had been pinned to the wall instead. Dear Madam Weatherberry, thank you for believing in me, but the academy isn't working out. I'm leaving this school and returning to show business. I know my parents tour dates, so it won't be hard for me to find them. I wish you and the others the best. XO, Lucy. P.S. Tangerina sucks. Bristol was so alarmed by Lucy's note that she dropped the tray of cupcakes and it shattered on the floor. Without wasting a minute, she waved her wand and made a coat appear over her shoulders and rushed down the stairs that rushed down the floating staircase. Her classmates heard the tray drop and peeped into the entrance hall to inspect what shattered. They were surprised to see Bristol heading for the front door in such a panic. Where's the fire? Emerilda asked. It's Lucy, Bristol said. She's run away. Oh no, Xanthos exclaimed. What do we do? You aren't going to do anything, Bristol said. Madam Weatherbury specifically asked me to look after you guys while she was gone, so I'm going to go get Lucy. You stay here in case Madam Weatherbury or Lucy returns. You mean you're going into the in-between at night? Skyline asked. You can't leave the academy, Tangerina said. It's against the rules. I've got to find Lucy before a horrible monster in the forest does, Bristol said. She hasn't been gone very long, so it shouldn't be difficult to track her down. I'll be back as soon as I can. Despite her classmates' fearful and frantic pleas to stay, Bristol ran out the door, ran down the castle's front steps, and sprinted across the academy grounds. She reached the edge of the property and waited impatiently while an archway formed in the hedge barrier. Once it finished, Bristol ran through the barrier's leafy tunnel and emerged into the creepy forest beyond it. Lucy, she called into the dark woods. Lucy, it's Bristol. Where are you? Bristol looked in every direction for her friend, but she could barely see anything. Eventually, her eyes adjusted to the darkness, but still she saw nothing except for crooked trees and jagged boulders. She cautiously moved down the dirt path and snaked through the in-between, jumping at every sound she heard. Lucy, are you there? She whispered. Can you hear me? With each step, Bristol became more and more frightened of her surroundings. Soon the dirt path split into two different directions, and Bristol had to choose which path to take. Both directions looked almost identical and Bristol worried that she might get lost. To help herself navigate, Bristol waved her wand and made the rocks beside the path glow in the dark, making the parts of the forest that she, marking the parts of the forest that she had already searched. Just as Bristol started to fear it was she was too late to save her friend, she heard the sound of sniffling in the distance. Bristol followed the sound through the woods and sighed with relief that she had finally found Lucy sitting under a tree. Lucy! Bristol exclaimed, there you are, I've been looking everywhere. Bristol's voice started her friend, startled her friend. Lucy jumped up to her feet and swung a large stick at her. Bristol dropped to the ground, barely missing getting hit. Lucy, relax, it's just me, Bristol. What the heck is wrong with you? Lucy said, you can't just sneak up on someone like that in a dangerous forest. Sorry, I didn't realize there was etiquette to this place, Bristol said. What are you doing here? Lucy asked. I'm looking for you. Bristol said, and she got to her feet. I found the note that you left, and I've come to talk some sense into you. Yeah, well, good luck, Lucy grumbled and threw her stick aside. I made up my mind, Bristol. I'm not spending another day in the academy. I knew I didn't belong there from the moment I laid eyes on that castle. Madame Weatherberry's lessons have only proved that. But that's not true, Bristol said. Our training has just started. You just need more time and practice. Don't let what Tangerine said make you give up on yourself. Stop trying to make me something I'm not, Lucy yelled. Face it, Bristol, I'm a witch. I'll never be a fairy like you and the others. And if I keep using my abilities, I'll turn into a monster, just like Madame Weatherberry's friends. I prefer to keep whiskers and scales off of my face. So I'm going as far away from this magic and witchcraft as possible. I'm leaving and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Lucy picked up her porcupine suitcase and swung her beaver skull canteen over her shoulder, proceeding down the path. As Bristol watched, Lucy walked away, and something inside of her changed. All the sympathy she felt for Lucy drained away, and it was replaced with irritation. She couldn't believe that she had risked her endangering, she had, what she had risked, entering a dangerous forest, only to have Lucy turn her back on her. Lucy Goose, you listen to me right now.
Bristol ordered. You are the best friend I have at the Academy and I am not about to lose you. I have lost too many people in my life to let you wander off like this. Whether you believe it or not, Madam Weatherberry has given us an opportunity of a lifetime and I will not let you throw it away to play stupid tambourine with your parents. Lucy was shocked by her remarks. Stupid tambourine. It's stupid and you know it. Bristol yelled. You have so much more to offer the world than that. You may not believe in yourself, but I believe in you enough for the both of us. So we're going to march back to the academy right now and continue our training. You're going to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're going to stop making excuses and you're going to work as hard as you possibly can to be a fairy I know you can be. And if we find out that you've been a witch all along the way, so what? If you're a witch, then you'll be the best witch that there's ever been. You're going to outwitch all the witchiest witches in the world, but I promise you will never become a monster on my watch. I'll be there to keep you in line and stop you from making mistakes, just like I am right now. Lucy was stunned by Bristol's emotional rant and stared at her as if Bristol was the scariest creature in the woods. <laughs> Do you honestly believe everything you just said? She asked. I risk my life to follow you into the in-between. What do you think? Hey, Claire, long time no see. Do you have the day off or something? Lucy went quiet as she realized how significant Bristol's gesture really was. Well, she said, I don't think anyone's ever believed in me that much and I have thousands of adoring fans. So have I convinced you to come back to the Academy? Bristol asked. A sweet grin came to Lucy's face. Apparently Bristol's tough love was much more effective than any words of encouragement could be. Oh, that's amazing, Roxy. I'll ship that out for you today. Yeah, Lucy said, I think you have. Good, Bristol laughed. Because if my red didn't work, I was about to drag you back by the... <laughs> Suddenly they heard a strange sound coming from nearby. <laughs> Bristol and Lucy looked around the forest but couldn't find where the noise was coming from. <laughs> Something was flying through the air but it moved too fast for them to catch a clear glimpse of what it was. <laughs> Bristol felt a light breeze across her cheek and two arrows hit the tree directly behind her. <laughs> Lucy looked up and down at a pair of arrows sticking into her porcupine suitcase. We're being shot, <laughs> excuse me. We'll be in shot at, Lucy cried. Bye. Who? Bristol asked in a panic. In the distance, the girls saw three men step out from the darkness. The first man wore a yellow vest and had a rope tied around his waist. The second man wore a red cape and had an axe swinging from his belt. And the third man wore a green cloak and held a pitchfork. All three were dirty and scruffy like they'd been in the forest for days and each of them carried a crossbow that was pointed in Bristol and Lucy's direction. Well, 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 the man in yellow said. It seems to be our lucky day. The Lord has led us to two witches in the same spot. <laughs> what did I tell you, boys? The man in red bragged. The rumors must be true. There's a whole coven of witches somewhere around here. Sinful scum, the man in green sneered. Did they really think they could live in the woods without anyone noticing? They are practically begging to be hunted down. Bristol and Lucy exchanged glances of terror and slowly backed away from the men. They're witch hunters, Bristol whispered, and they think we're witches. What should we do? Lucy whispered back. Bristol's mind went completely blank. Although her wand was securely in her hand, all of Madame Weatherberry's training had abandoned her, and there was only one thing she could think of doing. Run! Without a moment to lose, Bristol and Lucy bolted into the forest and ran away from the men as fast as they could. The witch hunters whistled and cheered and excited for a chase. They charged after the girls. The men shot arrows at Bristol and Lucy, but, unfor but fortunately, the thick forest made it difficult to aim. The ground was covered in so many roots and rocks that it was almost impossible to run without tripping. But Bristol and Lucy moved as swiftly as possible, knowing that one misstep could cause them their lives. As they ran, the girls looked back and forth between the men chasing them and the ground ahead. <clears throat> their escape came to a dead end when they slammed into the flat side of a hill they hadn't seen in the dark. The witch hunters surrounded them, beaming with a sinister glee. Obviously, watching their prey tremble in fear was their favorite part of the hunt. You're awfully young and pretty to be witches, the man in yellow sneered. That's because we're not witches, Bristol cried. We're fairies. You're making a terrible mistake. The men howled with laughter, like wolves howling at the moon. What did you hear that, boys? The man in yellow laughed. 
The girl in the sparkling garb says she's not a witch. Who cares what they are, the man in red said. No one in the village will know the difference. We'll be heroes when they see the bodies. Yeah, make sure to aim below their necks, the man in green instructed. We want to mount their heads on the wall. The witch hunters reloaded their crossbows and raised them at Bristol and Lucy. The girls closed their eyes and held each other in horror, expecting to be pelted with arrows at any moment. Just as the men were about to pull their trigger, they were distracted by something rustling in the trees nearby. Suddenly, a massive creature emerged from the woods and plowed into the witch hunters. The men were knocked to the ground and dropped their weapons. Before they could get to their feet, the mysterious beast plowed into them again, crushing the men's crossbows under its feet. <laughs> no, yeah. Bristol and Lucy didn't know if they were in more or less danger now that the creature had joined them. It was so large and moved quickly in the moonlight that Bristol and Lucy could only see one piece of it at a time. They saw horns and hooves, nostrils and teeth, fur and metal, but not enough to determine what they were looking at. Well, let's get out of here before we're killed, the man in red shouted. The witch hunters fled into the darkness and screamed like small children as they went. However, the creature stayed with Bristol and Lucy. It became very still and all three of them studied one another in total silence. Once her heart rate slowed and her senses returned, Bristol remembered the magic wand in her hand. She waved it through the air and dozens of twinkling lights illuminated the forest and the girls saw what kind of creature was standing before them. Oh my gosh, Bristol gasped. Well, that's not something you see every day, Lucy said. It wasn't one creature, but two. An enormous knight dressed from head to toe in silver armor sat on the back of a giant horse. A pair of antlers grew out of the knight's helmet and he wore a long fur cape. The horse had a pitch black hide and a long ebony mane. And to the girl's amazement, the steed had three heads instead of one. Everything about the strange knight and his horse was incredibly frightening, but there was an otherworldly quality about them too. And Bristol couldn't explain why, but she trusted the knight, like he was some kind of sacred being. The knight extended an open hand towards the girls. Bristol stepped forward and reached for his hand, but Lucy quickly pulled her back. Are you nuts? Lucy said, don't go near that thing. No, it's okay, Bristol assured her. I think he wants to help us. How do you know that? Lucy asked. Well, he just saved our lives, Bristol said with a shrug. If he wanted to hurt us, he would have done it by now. Bristol took the knight's hand and he pulled her aboard his three-headed horse. He reached towards Lucy next and after some coaxing, Bristol convinced Lucy to join them. The knight tugged on his horse's reins and together he and the girls traveled through the dark forest. Soon they returned to the dirt path and Chris Bristol spotted the academy's hedge barrier in the distance. How did he know where to take us? Lucy whispered. I have no idea, Bristol whispered back. The girls climbed down from the three-headed horse and looked up at the knight in awe. Thank you for saving us. Bristol said. Uh, yeah, thanks for the lift home, Lucy said. I'd give you a tip, but I'm all out of cash. What's your name, sir? Bristol asked. The knight didn't reply, but Bristol didn't take it personally. She had a sneaking suspicion that the knight was quiet because he couldn't speak. Well, whoever you are, we're very grateful to you, she said. And just then, a familiar galloping noise sounded through the forest. Bristol and Lucy turned toward the sound and saw Madame Weatherberry's golden carriage traveling toward them. The knight and his horse were so large that they blocked the path and the unicorns came to an abrupt stop behind them. The carriage door flew open and Madame Weatherberry stepped outside to address the knight. <clears throat> Horns, the fairy asked, what are you doing here? Is everything all right? Clearly the fairy and the knight knew each other. He steered his horse to the side of the path, revealing Bristol and Lucy standing behind him. Madam Weatherberry, Bristol cheered, you're back. She was overjoyed to see her teacher, but as Bristol walked closer to greet her, Madam Weatherberry seemed very different. The fairy was so exhausted, she looked 10 years older than when she left. The bags under her eyes and the dark gray at her temples were both larger than before, and both of her arms were now covered in gloves. Despite Bristol's wel warm welcome, the fairy was absolutely infuriated to see her students. What are you two doing outside of the academy? She yelled. Uh, we, 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 um, Bristol struggled to respond. It's my fault, Madam Weatherberry, Lucy confessed. I went outside the property because I thought it would be fun to explore the in-between, but Bristol knew it was dangerous and came to find me. We attacked, we were attacked by witch hunters, but luckily, this weird night guy, he saved us. 
How dare you disrespect me by breaking my rules, Madam Weatherberry roared. Both of you get inside this carriage now. Bristol and Lucy followed her instructions and hopped inside the golden carriage. Horrence, thank you for your assistance tonight, but I will take it from here, Madam Weatherberry told the knight. The knight bowed to the fairies like she would the fairy like she was royalty, and then slowly steered his three headed horse into the forest and disappeared from sight. Madame Weatherbury joined her students in the carriage and slammed the door behind her. How could you do this to me, Bristol? she snapped. Madame Weatherbury Madame Weatherbury, I told you it was my fault, Lucy said. But Bristol let it happen, she said. I trusted you, Bristol. I asked you to look after the others and you failed me. You have no idea. How disappointed I am in you. Hearing this brought tears to Bristol's eyes. I, I, I'm so sorry. I don't want to hear another word from either of you, the fairy said. As soon as we get to the castle, you will both go straight to your rooms and stay there until I say so. Is that understood? Bristol and Lucy nodded but stayed silent. Neither of them had seen their teacher so livid before, and they didn't even know the fairy was capable of such anger. It was like Madame Weatherbury had returned to the academy as a completely different person. Yikes. I mean, she's fair. It's fair to be angry, right? I mean, like, they did break the rules, right? I'm sorry. Like, I don't want Madame Weatherbury to be another person, but it is fair that she's upset at them, I think. They, they did, they did break the rules. Big yikes, you guys. Big yikes. Okay, so on my agenda today is to figure out the issue with the YouTube thing and get all of the past days uploaded for you guys. I know it's been a struggle. I tried the Dropbox thing, that didn't work, so I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna delete them all from my phone, re-download them all from TikTok and see if that helps. Um, I will probably be on later this afternoon to make base slime. Yeah, seriously. I know, Jen, I've been thinking about that as well. Um, so all of that is going to go on. Um, I am also going to post the sign up for next week's first roll for slime, um, which will be Monday. And then we'll go from there. So expect a lot of posts and stuff today because we also have to schedule the putty class and we also have to We have a lot of stuff to do. Pocket friends. Um, all right. Well, anyway, there's a lot going on. We have a lot to do. I have to do the Wednesday one because her birthday is the 30th. Um, if you want it to be the closest, yes, unless you want a video and then we could post it on her birthday. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people ask for that. A lot of people who are gifting a birthday slime to someone want it done on video so it could be posted on their birthday, which you know, and then like they give it to them. Like I mail it to you before I post the video, you have it in hand and you hand it to them right after they watch the video. It's up to you though. Like I'm, you can just message me and we can discuss how you want to do it. Um, it's totally your call, but that would be the closest one. Yes. If you want it to be alive, allegedly the number of lives goes one case. So you may be closer than you think allegedly. Oh, I thought it was moved. Yeah. I thought it was moved down to 800. I thought that I thought someone said that they moved the the live threshold to 800. So I'm only like 40 something away on the other account. I think it's 800. Okay, cool, 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 Claire. Um, yeah, so not too bad, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have book club on the book account. It just makes sense, right? But whatever. Um, anyway, either way, I will be back for uh, slime later. It'll just be I'm just gonna be making base slime and slime for the restock. Not, not any roll for slimes or anything like that. But that is the whole kit and caboodle. I am crossing my fingers that my clear glue arrives today because the stores have none, but I ordered like 10 of them from Target. So I can't make base slime unless the glue arrives. That's all I'm saying. So struggle right now. All right, see you guys later. Maybe if this turns